So Jesus says, anybody that drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Because the water that I shall give him will become in him a source of living water unto eternal life. So that means if we drink of the water that Jesus gives, we will not thirst again. That suggests that we are not to thirst after God once we take of this water. And what is this water? It's salvation. Before you're born again, you're to thirst after God because you have not received that water that Jesus gives. But when you receive salvation, you don't thirst again for God. I didn't say it. It's the scripture. It says we'll never, uses the word never, we'll never thirst. So there is no thirsting for God once you have received salvation. What there is, what you get when you receive salvation is you become the source of that water itself that springs unto eternal life because it says for the water that i shall give will become in him a source of living water that springs unto eternal life which means instead of thirsting for god every time you give that water to those who have not taken it who are thirsty for god because when you receive the water that jesus gives you will not thirst for god again so you don't get salvation to be thirsty for god every time that's not scripture if we stay with the scripture we will not say some things it's not scripture to thirst for god again and again is not scripture and then in another place jesus said i am the bread of life he who comes to me shall never hunger so if the scripture says he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who drinks of this water shall never thirst he who believes in me shall never thirst i go with the scripture you don't take the word to be hungry again you don't take the word to be thirsty again jesus said so he says when you take the water i shall give when you eat my bread you shall never thirst and you shall never hunger jesus said it i didn't say it so it's not scripture to say that we are to be hungry for god every time or we are to be thirsty for god every time jesus said the opposite we are to become the source for the world the source of this living water for the world the source of this bread of life for the world we are to give it to the world who are hungry and thirsty for god we are not to be hungry and thirsty for god we are now become the source of this living water in fact by design jesus is not impressed when we come again and again saying that we are thirsty we make him a liar he said we will never thirst so when we say we are thirsty again we make him a liar and by two immutable things for which it is impossible for God to lie. He cannot lie. So which means we are the ones in the wrong if we say we are thirsty for God again and again. The design is to make us source, source of this water. God is the master planner, is a system builder. He builds systems in place. He's not hungry for dependence. Let's stay with the scripture. If we stay with the scripture, we won't lead people into errors. So you go out there and give that water in the name of Jesus. Go out there and give that bread in the name of Jesus so that there can be more in the kingdom of God. Little wonder a lot of us as sons of God are not manifesting. Instead of giving that water to the world, we go back to God and say we are thirsty every day. No, that's not the design. That's not scripture. That's not God's setting. That's not what he put in place. Mm -mm. What he put in place is you take the water once, you take the bread once, you hunger no more, you're thirsty no more. And then you become the source giving out this water. You are not thirsty now. You are the source. You are the source. That's God's design. He makes you a source. He makes you a source. He didn't design it for you to be thirsty every time. No. It makes you a source. You are now the source of the living water springing up onto eternal life. Go out there and share this living water. Go out there and give it to those that are actually thirsty. You are not thirsty. They can't make God a liar. Be healed in your body. Be cleansed in your blood. Be cleansed in your system. Be strengthened in your bones. In the name of Jesus. I set you free of that cancer. I set you free of that COVID. I set you free of that pneumonia. I set you free of that sickness. I set you free of that diabetes. I set you free of that leukemia. I set you free of that anemia. I set you free of that sickness, of that sickle cell disease. 
that is ravaging your system that is ravaging your parents finances that is ravaging your husband's finances i set you free from it in the name of jesus you are free you are free you are free share your testimony with us we would love to hear it if you don't have jesus in your life brothers and sisters you need jesus Victory in life is only guaranteed in Christ. If you would like to live such a life of victory, you learn to receive eternal life. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Oh God, I come to you humbly. I leave everything behind. I believe you raised Jesus, your son, from the dead. I confess Jesus, your son, as my Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I am a new creation. I have eternal life. Hallelujah. If you just pray that prayer with me, brothers and sisters, welcome to the fold. Welcome to the family. I would like you to also receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It is an empowerment. It is a promise. It's a gift. Without the Holy Spirit, you will struggle with a lot of things. Without the Holy Spirit, you would not be able to lead an effective Christian life. So I would want you to receive the Holy Spirit. The same way you got born again is the same way you received the Holy Spirit. And this is how you will know. This is one of the evidences that you have received the Holy Spirit. You will speak in tongues because the Holy Spirit will give you utterances. Nobody will teach you. The Holy Spirit himself will give you utterance. When the Holy Spirit gives you the utterance, your own responsibility is to open your mouth and speak it. It might be two syllables, it might come in one syllable, it might come in five syllables, ten syllables. But whatever utterance that the Holy Spirit gives you after this prayer, speak it. Say, my Father in heaven, I receive the infilling of your Spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now begin to speak those words that the Holy Spirit is putting in your spirit. Begin to speak them up. Share your testimony with us. We would love to hear from you.